when you create yourself to make it, uh, you're going to have to either let that creation go and and take a chance on being loved or hated for who you really are, or you're going to have to kill who you really are and fall into your grave grasping onto a character that you never were. I saw this psychic palm reader sign and uh, she gave me a reading and she said, you're about to do three things, three movies that will be very, very, very big and very important. And after that, it will be impossible for anyone to knock you down from that place. I worked in factories. I had a ninth grade education. And it's a series of like crushing disappointments. And I just go into a different gear. I go into, don't know how it's gonna write itself, but it will, you know? I don't know how. I mean, I'm the guy he wrote the $10 million check to himself and uh, had it come to fruition. I'm the guy who had the uh, substitute teacher in grade two who said that, uh, you know, whenever I want something, I pray to the Virgin Mary and I ask her for it and I promise something in return and I get whatever I want. And my dad could never afford a bicycle, so I went, yeah. Yeah, I went home and I prayed for a bicycle and promised I'd say the rosary in return and then I got uh, a bicycle, showed up in my living room brand new Mustang bike. I put it in one of the scenes in Eternal Sunshine, a Mustang bike with a banana seat. Just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million. And then on it was whenever I wanted something to happen, I manifested it. I stood there in an open field like this, my arms out. My father was not only the funniest man in the room, but he was a fantastic saxophone player. And before I was born, he had an orchestra in Toronto. But, you know, in order to be something special, you had to leave Canada and come down to the States and prove yourself in the States. He was a little bit afraid of that transition, and, and also he had a family to take care of, so he became an accountant. And uh, as time wore on, it wore him down. You know, it wore him down and he got a little bit bitter, especially when he lost his job when he was 51. Uh, that really broke him. Not only was he compromising to raise a family, but when you compromise and you fail, it really hurts. It hurts even more than failing at what you love. So that was an example for me. I learned that you can fail at what you don't love. So you might as well do what you love. There's, there's really no choice to be made. Somewhere in the middle of absolute confusion, absolute disappointment, absolute uh, the fruition of all of my dreams, standing there with everything anybody else had ever dreamed about having and being unhappy. Where did this character come from? What is the dirt that the, the pearl is built around? And the pearl is the personality that you build around yourself as a protection against that thought. If they ever find out that I'm worthless, if they ever find out that I'm not enough, I'll be destroyed. I don't want anything. That's the craziest thing, and it's the weirdest thing to say in, in a place like America, where I have no ambition. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying, I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. Because life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. How do I know this? I don't.
but I'm making sound, and that's the important thing. That's what I'm here to do. Sometimes I think that's the only thing that's important, really. You know, it's just letting each other know we're here, yeah. reminding each other that we're part of a larger self.